I wanted to tell you about something that happened to me while I was growing up. I did not realize this, uh, but I had, a, I had two different recurring health issues that I didn't think were related. One was since I was a little kid, I would just have these spontaneous nosebleeds where it, it was pretty intense and pretty severe. It, it, it would sometimes be, uh, my nose would be bleeding for like 15 minutes. Uh, and that is, that's uh, sort of scary and, you know, not that fun. Uh, and uh, it happened often enough that I, a couple of times, went to the doctor and they cauterized, I believe that's how you say it, the inside of my nose, actually burned it to try to make it tougher so that it would not bleed so much. And another thing that I, I, I didn't really notice it until I was in college, but from, the, from my college years on later, I had trouble with vertigo, where all of a sudden I would just be... The, the room would be spinning out of control. I would feel like I was going to just fall over one way or the other. Uh, it was very scary if I was driving, uh, but I don't, it didn't happen too, too many times that way. But I would just get so dizzy, sometimes to the point where I'd have to lay down for two or three days, where it, it, it was just so bad. And I felt nauseous and felt gross and everything. Once I got married, <clears throat> my wife, Shelly, would say to me, you need to be drinking water. I don't know if you've ever noticed, Shelly is always drinking water. And so she, she said, Gary, you need to be drinking water. That, that probably will help with what you got going on. And I just, I don't know, it just didn't click. I just could not see in my mind how that could possibly have anything to do with sudden. It sort of became a little bit more convenient for me. Uh, I just never have craved water. I would, I would like to drink milk or juice or pop or just about anything else but water. Uh, but, you know, once, once I can have a, have a bottle of water, it's easier to, easier to take with me. For some reason, it just helped, and I started drinking water. The amazing thing is that once I started doing that, the nosebleed stopped and the vertigo stopped. Getting enough water actually prevented those things from happening. And, you know, every, every so often still, uh, uh, one of those issues will come back. <clears throat> Never as severe as it was when I was growing up. But I have found that even if I let myself get a little dehydrated, as I am this morning, which is why I need to be taking those drinks, that um, water actually can also cure it. So if I started feeling dizzy... I would just guzzle as much water as I could and it would go away like in an hour or two instead of a couple of days. It's pretty amazing. And all that time, I did not know that my body was craving water. My body was thirsty. My mind just did not make that connection that that, that, that was causing those things. Uh, and so it, it's interesting to, to look back now and see, ah, I just never connected that that's what thirst felt like. I had always felt thirst, but I, I, I just, I didn't connect it. I don't know why, I just did not connect those dots. So you're, you'll see where I'm going with this. Would you turn in your Bible, if you've got a Bible handy, I encourage you to pick it up, get God's Word in your hand. We're going to go to Psalm chapter 42 and look at verses 1 to 6 today. And we'll, we'll come back in, in just a moment and read those Bible verses. So uh, they're not going to be up on the screen for me today. So I encourage you to have your Bible so you can, you can read it for yourself. So while you're turning to Psalm 42, I want to ask you, have you ever been jealous of the people in the Bible? I, I know it sounds crazy, but I'm, I'm kind of jealous of their relationship with God. It seems like there's so many people in the Bible that are great friends with God. God talks to them. God gives them messages. God gives them sometimes years ahead of when those happen. Uh, sometimes God wrestled with people physically. Uh, sometimes God would show up and um, they, they weren't sure, is this the Lord? Is this an angel? Is this a person? Uh, and and it, it's, it's so amazing to me to see and to read in the Bible about the closeness that, that, that all, these, all the famous Bible characters had with God. Sometimes he even disciplined them, like 
And I always ask myself, how did he talk to them? How did he give them that message? How did it come? How did, they give them those, did God give them those visions and dreams? We want to hear from God, but so many times when we say our prayers or read the Bible, we can't feel a thing. And so that makes us wonder what's going on. Or sometimes when we pray, we do all of the talking. And, and I, I think that sometimes because we are sort of nervous about, I don't want to put God on the spot or something like that. I can't force God to speak in a certain way at a certain time. And so we just fill up the time in prayer with us talking. Sometimes when we pray for other people, we lack confidence because, frankly, we don't really know what God wants to do at that moment in that person's life. We haven't heard from God. We haven't taken the time or found a way to actually hear from God and know what he would want us to pray for in any given situation. I think the person who wrote down Psalm 42 under the inspiration of the Holy Spirit, I think that... He could relate a lot to you and me. Let's look at Psalm 42, verses 1 and 2. As the deer longs for streams of water, so I, and that word I, uh, in other translations you see it a little bit more clearly, that's my soul, my inner self. So, as the deer longs for streams, uh, I'm not sure uh, how long we were off there. My uh, tech department just came in. And made an adjustment. Started talking about my soul longs oh, hold on. for. I'm getting a message. Okay, all right. <laughs> you might need to back up for this. Okay, so I'm gonna go back just a little bit, and we'll recap just in case you miss some of that. It's the miracle of technology, which I know is you know it's it's great when it works. Okay, so Psalm 42, verses one and two. <clears throat> As the deer longs for streams of water, so I. Long for you, O oh God. And that word I really is a broader meaning. It's, a, it's, it's from a Hebrew word that means my soul, my inner self. Uh, uh, verse 2, I, or my soul, uh, myself, I thirst for God, the living God. When can I go and, uh, and stand before him? So as the deer longs for streams of water, so my soul, so myself, longs for you, O oh God. My soul thirsts for God, the living God. When can I go and stand before him? In the Amplified Bible, it says, When shall I come and behold the face of God? Oh, wow. NIV says, Where, When can I go and meet with him? And it just paints a picture of someone who's really um, just wants to be in God's presence, wants to be with him. And he uses this word picture of a deer, picture like a five-point buck running through the forest to try to escape from a predator. And he's running, running, and he stops. He listens, dares not even twitch his ear, looks around, and he thinks, well, maybe the coast is clear. But then he hears a twig snap. He takes off running again. He's just running, running, running. doesn't even look back. He's just finding the, the clearest path and just jumping over trees and running to the point where he's, he's getting hot, He's huffing and puffing. He, he's panting. And maybe his tongue is hanging out. And that deer is just longing for a, a stream to, where he can just bend down and get a drink and be refreshed and revitalized. Maybe he, he's thinking, I have to keep running, but I, need, I just need a drink so badly. That's the feeling that the writer of Psalm 42 has about God. I'm so thirsty for God's presence. I just long to be refreshed and revived in the presence of God. It, it, it sounds like as the psalm goes on that maybe he's in exile or he is away from the temple in Jerusalem where he's used to going and worshiping God. In verse uh, 3, it says, Day and night, I have only tears for food. So there, we're going to see that so much is going on in his life and there are people who are coming against him. And he, all, he just sets aside food, and all they can do is weep and pray to God for help and for his presence. As he says uh, in verse 3, to continue on, he says, Day and night I have only tears for food, while my enemies continually taunt me, saying, Where is this God of yours? 
So he's facing pressure from unbelievers. And they're, they're mocking him. And they're mocking his faith. And they're saying, if your God is so real, he, he should show up and you know, do some tricks. That's kind of what they said to Jesus, basically. The psalm writer, he can't even eat because of his distress. And I think that we're in sort of a similar state today in that unbelievers have gotten bolder and bolder in their opposition against God, against God's people, against godly Christian values. This psalm writer then, he is using the time that he would have eaten normally. He's using it to press into God and to call out to God and ask God for help. And he is pursuing the presence of God. Verse 4, he goes on to say, my heart is breaking. So it's, it's a dark time for him. And he's kind of pouring out his longing for God. He said, my heart is breaking as I remember how it used to be. I walked among the crowds of worshipers, leading a great procession to the house of God, singing for joy and giving thanks amid the sound of a great celebration. So he's remembering back how it used to be when he and all of his friends and the other worshipers, they would go up for, for special days, for Sabbath days, for holidays where they're worshiping God. And he just remembers the joy and the happiness and the singing and the scripture quoting and, and just even the, the foods, the special foods and everything. And he's saying, it's not happening anymore. And that makes my heart feel sad. Again, I see some parallels in our time. Really, the COVID pandemic, it, it, has, it has kind of taken a bite out of church gatherings, really gatherings of any, time, any kind. But I think of our church gatherings because there, there are people who are concerned uh, about uh, contracting the virus and, and they have stayed away from the gathering. And I know they miss the gathering and we miss them in the gatherings. Of course, wearing masks makes it so much harder to connect with people. It's, it's hard to recognize people. Is, is that the person I met last week with a mask on with half the face covered? And it, it can definitely be a disheartening time for all of us in the church. And so he kind of begins to wrap up and he says in verse 5, But why am I discouraged? Some translations say, Why so downcast, O oh my soul? Why is my heart so sad? And he kind of makes a switch in his mind, and he gets his, his mind off of everything that's going on around him, and he gets it on God. And, and he says, I will put my hope in God. I will praise him again, my Savior and my God. And I just love that the solution for everything he's going through, and for everything that we're going through, is God. God is the solution. In another uh, psalm, in Psalm 107, verses 8 and 9, and this is kind of a key verse for our, our new series that we're starting today, Hunger and Thirst. Psalm 107, verses 8 and 9. Let them praise the Lord for his great love and for the wonderful things he has done for them. For, listen to this, he satisfies the thirsty and fills the hungry with good things. The Lord, oh, no, sorry, he satisfies the thirsty and fills the hungry with good things. And we're talking of, of spiritually speaking. And as we go along in this series, we're going to look at what fills your hunger spiritually, excuse me, and what satisfies your thirst spiritually. And there, there are some very specific things. It's very, really cool. I, I just encourage you to be here for every one of, the, of the, the messages in this series, because I think it's going to bless you. So in, in 2022, we as a congregation are going to be focusing on our hunger and thirst for God, for his presence and for his power. Those two words, that's a, that's a phrase that, that we feel like, uh, Pastor Shelley and I, that the Lord dropped in our hearts for this year, the coming year. The presence and power of God, pursuing his presence and experiencing his power. So we would say for ourselves and for our church, as the deer longs for streams of water, so I long for you, O God. 
I thirst for God, the living God. When can I go and stand before him? When can I go and be with God face to face? Because we just want to so badly. So I want to invite you to join me in a little experiment for 2022. Let's wholeheartedly together pursue God's presence and experience God's power as a church. No one left behind. No one feeling like, oh, I don't know how to hear from God. I don't know how to be with God. No, let's together, let's, let's help each other and encourage one another along this year. I want to ask you, and this is the experiment part, how do you think your next year would go, the year 2022? How do you think it would go for you if you would devote and dedicate the first month to God? You know, just like in other areas of our lives, we give God the first 10% of our income because by doing that, by giving Him the first part, we are, uh, we are surrendering the whole thing to Him symbolically. And He blesses the whole thing. And that's what we're doing with our year. We're, by giving God the first 12th, <laughs> the first month of January, we're saying, God, 2022 is yours. You take it. You be glorified. You accomplish what you want to in my life and through my life. And there's something very powerful that happens when you do that. So how do you think your year would be different if you dedicated the first month to God? We've got a gift to help you pursue God this year. And I just realized I, I forgot I, uh, my, uh, my prop. I'm going to show you the journal. We... Uh, we took a break from, from doing this last year because we went through the book Prevail. But we have created a custom NFC journal for you that is a resource to help you pursue the present and experience the power of God. It's got all kinds of resources in it. So I want to invite you to join me on a brand new custom made for NFC Bible reading plan. Just a chapter a day, and we start this coming Friday on January 1st. I think this Friday is January 1st, but it's on January 1st. We're going back to the beginning, to Genesis 1. And uh, I don't think we're going to read the whole book of Genesis right off the bat, but we're going to go back to the beginning and just see what God had in mind for you and me and for this world when he created it way back on day one. And in the journal, it's one of my favorite ways to hear from God. And if you struggle with hearing from God, I want to challenge you to join me in journaling. Inside the journal, there's a little, um, some instructions, some tips, some recommendations on how to journal in such a way that you would hear from God. And I, I believe, I, I can say, every time I journal, I hear from God. Because I dig into His Word, I stop, I meditate on it, I shut up, and I listen. And God speaks through his word and he brings it to life and he helps me to apply it to my life. It's a very cool way to hear from God. So I encourage you to get on the Bible reading plan, to try journaling occasionally, and here's a biggie. And here's, here's what makes January so special. I invite you to join me and join our congregation on 21 days of prayer and special in my life. But for, today, for now, I just want to invite you. It starts in a couple weeks. So uh, pick up the journal. You, can, you should be able to pick it up this next Sunday at church. Lord willing, we won't be snowed out. <laughs> and in the journal, there are tips on how to fast. There's different ways to fast. There's uh, uh, some suggestions on how to do it in a healthy way. And also... Brand new this year, there, we created a journal, like kind of a, a devotional for the prayer and fasting time. So since we are creating time with the Lord by setting aside eating, shopping for food, preparing food, cleaning up after food, we're setting aside all that time. We actually capture quite a bit of time any meal that we fast. We're, and we're, we're giving it to the Lord. So since we have a little bit extra time, we've got a devotional for you. In addition to one chapter uh, of the Bible a day, there is um, some additional reading and some place for you to take some notes and talk to the Lord. 
Inside the journal, there's a bunch of pages for writing notes to God, writing down prayer requests. I encourage you to do that and keep track of all the ways that God is working in your life. So we're going to start in two weeks. I really want to encourage you to fast. If you've never fasted and prayed before, uh, would you just fast? start by fasting one meal? Just start there. But the key is to give all that time from that meal to God. Just sit in his presence. We've got some tips what to do, what, uh, what to read, what to, what, to, what to talk to God about. And just be with God. Just listen. And your life will begin to change from that moment on. I guarantee it. Uh, I, I, I really want to see you take some new steps and see some new results in your life. I believe that we are in need of a Holy Spirit revival today. And some of the devotional in the journal is going to be about revival and what it means and what it's like. I, I, I believe we need a revival, a Holy Spirit revival, like the, the early church experience on the day of Pentecost. Definition, a great illustration, a great look at what revival is. It is a fresh outpouring of the Holy Spirit on our lives with the overwhelming presence of God upon us that changes us individually and collectively as a group, as a congregation until that overwhelming presence of God overflows from us and it powerfully impacts our city and our region. That is what I am craving from God, for me, for my family, for our church family, revival and a fresh outpouring of the Holy Spirit with the overwhelming presence of God upon us that changes us individually and as a group until it overflows and powerfully impacts our city and our region. And uh, if the Lord allows, I believe that he is going to be leading me to preach through the book of Acts. In a, in a few weeks, I'd, I'd be starting that series. And we're going to really drill into what that first uh, revival looked like, that first Holy Spirit revival. I pray that revival is on the way for you and for me, for us in 2022. I want to pray for you as we're, we're getting close to wrapping up, but please don't leave quite yet. i got a little bit more for you. And I want to start by praying using the words to one of the songs that we had planned to sing today. Yes, our plans change. But the, the words to this song just speak to me so much, and it is a prayer. And so I, I want to pray this prayer over you and me. Let's pray. God, we've seen what you can do, O oh God of wonders. Your power has no end. The things you've done before... In greater measure, you will do again. Because there's no prison wall you can't break through. No mountain you can't move. All things are possible. There's no broken body you can't raise. No soul that you can't save. All things are possible. And so, Lord, we just pray for a Holy Spirit revival for me for Pastor Shelley, for our family, for our church, Lord, for our city. We pray for a Holy Spirit revival, that you would come, Holy Spirit, and flood your church, flood my life. Lord, we long for you, we crave you, we thirst for your presence. And Lord, we purpose to pursue you. And I pray, Holy Father, Lord, I pray that you would pour out your Holy Spirit on your church. And Jesus, Baptize us afresh into overflowing with your Holy Spirit, that we would see you more clearly, that we would know you better, that we would be a friend to you, Lord God, that our friendship with you would strengthen. Lord, I pray also that we would see signs and wonders. Jesus, you said that we would do your work, and your work was teaching and preaching, healing, deliverance and saving. Lord, I pray that you would do those works through us, that we would do your works. And you said, Jesus, that we would do even greater works than these because you're going back to heaven. 
And so, Jesus, I pray for greater works. I pray for a Holy Spirit revival. I pray that every single person in our church would feel closer to you by the end of 2022, and especially during the time of prayer, praying and fasting. Lord, I pray in Jesus' name for revival. I pray for revival in us. Now, one more thing I want to pray for you about. I, I don't know everybody, you know, who's who's tuning in right now. Some of you may be watching live. Some of you might, might be watching after the fact. And that's great. But I, I want to give you an opportunity to put your faith in Jesus. How do you do that? How do you become a Christian? How do you become his apprentice? Where you learn uh, of Jesus and you, you walk with Jesus and you talk with Jesus and you be with him. He is the master, you're the apprentice. How do you do that? Well, according to God's word, you turn from your sin. Turn away from those things that separate you from God. Turn your life over to God. Say, God, I'm giving my life to you. And let him lead. Begin to follow Jesus. Begin to follow God's ways. You're going to find out that God's ways boils down to love. Loving God. Loving the people around you. If you would like to put your faith in Jesus today, now, I, I encourage you, don't put your faith in your good works. Because that does not save us. Put your faith in Jesus' work on the cross. We're sinners in need of a Savior, and he gave his life on the cross to save us from our sin. So if you would like to give your life to Jesus today, if you would like to become his apprentice, put your faith in Jesus, would you pray with me right now? And uh, maybe if you're with somebody, even if there are people you know really well, like, like your family, would you just turn to the person on, on either side of you and say, do you need to put your faith in Jesus today? Do you want to put your faith in Jesus? Let's pray. So I'm just going to lead everybody in a prayer. And I encourage you, don't pray to me, but you can repeat after me, but say those words to Jesus. All right, let's go. Let's pray. Jesus, you say, Jesus, I invite you into my life. I know I'm a sinner, so please forgive me of my sin. And make me new. I choose to follow you starting now. In Jesus' name, amen. And if you prayed that prayer today, would you just do me a favor? Just let me know. I really want to pray for you and encourage you. Would you just get out your smartphone and text the word restart. Restart, like you're making a new start in your life. Text the word restart to the phone number 97,000, okay? Restart to 97,000, and that will automatically tell me you prayed the prayer today to put your faith in Jesus. Now, anybody else out there in online land, if you have not yet connected with us, you can do that by just texting the word GREET to the phone number 97,000, same phone number. And, that, and just follow the prompts, you guys. If you send in one of those texts, follow the prompts, and, uh, and just uh, another text or two, and we'll begin connecting and following Jesus together. All right. Well, man, it's been good to be together. It has been a little bit different service, but I hope you're blessed. I hope you're encouraged. I hope you're fired up about pursuing Jesus' presence and experiencing his power. By the way, I know you won't have the journal in your hands in time to start the Bible reading plan, but it's on the app. It, and it's on the website. So it's easy to get to. You can get those first couple days and then pick up your journal as soon as you can make it to church. All right, everybody. God bless you and we'll see you next time.